It's a familiar scene at hockey arenas across North America. The soldier, the hero, honored at center ice. But this scene is different. Today, surrounded by 3,000 fans and 40 young hockey players, our soldier isn't the only hero on the ice. Hockey's been everything for me. It's kind of taken over my life so far, uh, in a good way, I think. Here is Shire, Shire in back and he scores! Hockey's played a big role in his life. He's a team player, for sure. He is not a me guy, he's a we guy, no question about it. In 2014, Toronto native Kevin Shire was fulfilling a dream, playing Division I hockey at Union College in upstate New York. He was a gifted playmaker, but his road to Union had more to do with his character off the ice than his skills on it. What went through my mind when I saw him running down there was, you know, good, go, like go, like don't, don't hesitate, like you have to do this. In December of 2013, Kevin and his father Peter were driving from Toronto to Schenectady, New York. It was the biggest day of Kevin's young life. An interview to play hockey at NCAA Powerhouse Union College. I was very nervous. That morning I was kind of thinking about, oh, what if this doesn't go well and what if they don't like me as a person? But what happened on that road would reveal more about Kevin's character than any interview ever could. It's a very straight highway, so about probably a mile and a half away we saw a car that looked to be on fire. As we got closer, we saw that there was a person trapped under the steering wheel. My dad and I looked at each other and we kind of said, well, should we stop? So I had jumped out of the tr our truck and, and reached into the back seat to grab my coat. And by the time I turned around, Kevin had already run down to the, to the truck. At that point, there was a couple other people trying to pry the door open with a, I believe it was a crowbar at that point. But we ran over and probably 10 or 20 seconds after I got there, they popped the door open. And they all kind of stood back as if we got the door open, what do we do next? Luckily, we were able to cut the seatbelt and uh, pull um, him out to, uh, to safety. And then about 20 seconds later, the whole, the gas tank exploded, so. At that time when the police officer arrived, my dad and I looked at each other and we figured that we should probably get on our way. There was nothing else we could do. Shaken by the experience, Kevin and his father continued their trip to Union College. Kevin still had that big interview, but he couldn't stop thinking about the crash. I was pretty rattled for the first, well, the whole trip. I had to think about if he was dead. I thought he was dead still, but I had to switch modes and I knew that this was a very important interview for me and my future, so I just had to suck it up and push it out of my mind. It was a long process for him to keep everything in, and without me knowing, it was probably went about, I don't know, 20 minutes to a half an hour before something was even mentioned. Then they went into the story, and it was it was <laughs> it was really like uh, of all the recruiting processes that have uh, had a chance to be a part of in in uh, 14 years to that point, that was clearly the the most impressive. With the interview over, Kevin searched for answers to the accident. He turned on the TV and received some good news. Dramatic rescue on the state throughway has likely saved the life of a soldier based at Hancock Field in Syracuse. He turned to his dad, dad, he said, he's alive, he, he's alive, he's, he's alive. And we, you know, and I said, well, I said, you know what that means, right? And he said, yeah, he's alive. I said, no, it means that you just saved a guy's life, Kevin. You helped save a guy's life. But not just any guy. It was National Guardsman, Captain Tim Neald, an Afghanistan war veteran, winner of a Bronze Star, a genuine, bona fide American hero. I can't even imagine what he's had to go through, and, and I think we all think of him 
you know, almost every day. You know, it's the man who served his country, and you know, the, this guy's a hero. With his wife and physical therapist by his Those, side, yeah, Captain kind of Timothy like Neal is taking yeah, the first but, steps uh, he's taken since an accident almost took his life. Captain Neal survived, but his body wouldn't be the same. His left foot was crushed, his right one nearly amputated. He was also badly burned. They just stopped alongside the road and saved my life. <laughs> but Tim was motivated to walk from the hospital. He wanted to meet the small group of Good Samaritans that saved him. Through 2014, he had met them all, except one. I'd definitely like to meet him, and I think now when I get down there, I'll definitely have to have lunch with them and meet them for the first time. On November 14th, Kevin and Tim finally got to meet, assisted with an invitation from Union College. It is fun. How, how can you not have fun in a hockey game? All right. It's getting cold. i take my hat off. You want to speak, Kevin? How are you? Nice Doing well. You. Nice to finally meet you. Oh, well, you met me before, yeah. but I was, yeah. I didn't meet you. I know, but it's nice to meet you. It's so nice you? to meet you, yeah, too. Yeah, too. How are you doing? I'm doing well. It's nice to meet you. You doing okay? Yeah. Yeah. You look... I'm up and walking. Yeah, you look great. Uh, it was overwhelming, definitely, uh, at the beginning when he walked in, but um, I think that feeling passed pretty quick. I mean, I, I don't have to walk with the cane, but uh, it helps with the pain. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You look, you look but good. I would have been toast there quick. And <laughs> I'm sure you know that. It's incredible that um, he's right here. So uh, he's part of my family. Do you consider him family? Oh, yeah. Kevin. Rick. Nice to meet you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Of course. It was really great what you did that day. Of course. I can't thank you enough. Of course, yeah. Come here. My pleasure. Yeah. After the meeting, a ceremony at Center Ice, the kind which is usually reserved for the veteran. Kevin is presented with a Medal of Honor from Tim, one hero to another. Shiro is presented with the New York State Conspicuous Service Medal. That is a second highest award presented in the name of the Governor of New York. Puck drop dropped by Captain Neal. And that helps put things into perspective. Captain Neal gets a great a standing ovation from the crowd as he turns and waves. And what a story. I heard about the explosion, how Kevin ran in and got you out of the car before the explosion happened. Yeah. What do you think that says about him and, and his character? Um, <clears throat> he's willing to do whatever he can to help somebody in need. He can put his own his own self at risk. I mean, nobody knew that day. They they were risking their their lives for mine. It says a lot. True heroes. They don't look for stuff, and they. They say things like what he told me. I did it because you would have done it for me. Uh, I don't know. I don't really know what to think. I, I, I don't think I'm a hero. I, the guys that are wearing camel are the heroes, and Tim's a hero, but I'm not. I'm just a regular guy.